Can you understand your target language really well, but when you try and speak it, nothing comes out? In this video, I'll tell you why that is, what exactly to do about it, and some language learning resources that you can use that I would recommend to fix this exact problem. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie. I am a language coach. I help online language learners figure out what their obstacles are, remove them, and help them understand exactly how to learn a language in a way that works for them. So if you're looking for more content like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Why does this happen? Well, this is a really, really common problem that a lot of people fall into accidentally. Basically, the idea is that you have a lot of passive knowledge, but you don't have the active knowledge. What does that mean exactly? While there are many types of skills in a foreign language, the two main ones are active and passive. Passive means that when you see it, hear it, you can understand it, you can get a general idea of what's going on, even if you don't understand every single word that's being said. Active means when you speak or you write something, then you can can generally get the message out of your brain that you're trying to communicate. Let's go for a more concrete example. Let's say that you see a kind of fancy word and when you see or hear that fancy word, you understand what it means. Let's say the word possess. You know, it's, it's not too fancy. Um, when you see it, when you read it in a book, when you hear it in a show, you understand what they're saying, right? It's, it's, it, it doesn't take much thought. You realize that it's basically a fancy way of saying have. I have this pen. I possess this pen. Means the same thing. Possess is just a fancier way to say it. That's not a problem, right? The problem is when you are having a conversation with a friend and you want to use a word kind of like that, you're not really going to think of that word, right? You're going to say, I have this pen. It's not going to be the easiest to come up with the word possess just because it's not something that you actively use a lot. It's something that you passively use and understand, but it's not a word that you are accustomed to saying a lot. It's the same kind of thing with learning languages. When you're used to passively taking it in and understanding it and figuring it out, but you're not used to producing the language on your own and communicating your messages, it's, it's gonna be more difficult to actively communicate your messages just because you don't have practice with that. Now, this is a really common problem in language learning just because the more popular language apps out there, think Duolingo, think Memorize, those really simple, easy to access, easy feel good apps, while there's nothing wrong with them, that's all passive knowledge. That's fill in the blank. That's reading and pressing buttons. There's not a whole lot of actual speaking. There's not, not a whole lot of active responding. So you get a lot of practice with the passive knowledge, seeing a sentence, getting a general idea of what's going on in that sentence, and you know, basically affirming that you got a decent understanding of that sentence, but there's not a whole lot of being asked questions and responding verbally or responding with written words where you have to understand the intricacies of language and the grammar points, how to spell them, making sure you have the right accents, all sorts of stuff. I do want to be clear that having more passive knowledge than active knowledge isn't necessarily a bad thing. If it's intentional, that's fine. I've been studying French for over a year now and because I have not actively been speaking French or trying to speak it, my speaking is terrible. My passive skills are getting pretty good because I've been working on my passive skills. So if it's intentional, there's nothing wrong with it. It's when you accidentally find yourself in this mix up. So if you find yourself in this position accidentally where you've been spending a lot of time getting passive information, but you haven't been practicing actively and now you're stuck, what do you do about it? The simple answer is that you have to switch up your strategy. You have to switch up what resources you're using. So if you've been using Duolingo, if you've been using Memorize and you really need to beef up on your active skills more, you're going to have to put away or at least use those passive resources less in favor for more active resources, resources that are really going to push you to actively use the language, actively speak it, actively write it. Simply put, you, you got to be speaking it or writing it in some way depending on your goals. And now, of course, fair warning, it's gonna be really, really difficult. It's gonna really, really suck at first because you're at a level of ease in your passive knowledge. Like you see a sentence, you can pretty much figure it out without a whole lot of effort. But when you start pushing yourself to actively use the language, you're gonna feel like you don't know anything. So you're gonna have to be prepared for that. Be prepared to feel overwhelmed. Be prepared to feel like you don't know anything, that you've wasted your time. That's normal, that's okay. That's gonna happen at first. 
what you have to do is you have to keep working at it, keep being consistent with it, and eventually your active skills are going to grow to meet up with your passive skills. You just have to put the time in. Have you been experiencing this problem? Let me know in the comment section below. Now that we know what exactly to do to solve this problem, what kind of resources should we be using? Generally speaking, what's important, like I said, is that you're using resources that get you to speak or write your active skills. They get you, they motivate you, they push you, they like not obligate you, but really inspire you to use a language actively. So there, there's, there's no strict rules here about what kind of resources, just, you know, keep your mind open, but I do have some specific resources for you, of course. The first resource recommendation I have for you is my favorite for this particular problem, and that is YASK. YASK is best for intermediate language learners, so basically if you have an intermediate understanding of the language, then YASK might be a really great way for you to practice actively using the language. In fact, YASK is the only language learning app that I know of that specifically helps with this problem, which, like I said, is a very, very common problem. With YASK, you'll get very short, very easy to complete prompts that help you with your writing, your, your pronunciation, with your speaking. There's all all sorts of things. Basically, you'll go after one word and you will practice using that word or a grammar concept, things like that. And you will practice using that word or using that grammatical concept in phrases. This could mean writing out the phrase. This could mean pronouncing the phrase and recording the audio. This could mean free speak. And then when you complete these prompts, it'll be sent off into the community of Yask users as well as the Yask bot which I explain more about it in my review, link below in the description. Um, but I really love the way that Yask has a bot that comes to you, comes to your prompt and corrects you and has a general idea of how to fix it. And then Yask community members, real human beings who speak the language either natively or at a very high level, will either agree with the Yask bot and or they will correct you themselves. And the whole app is really, really fun and engaging and really feel good and exciting. So I would really, really highly recommend it if you're suffering from this exact problem. And if you use the link below in the description, you will also get a free month from yours truly. If you don't have an intermediate level of understanding in your language, however, there are other options that I can recommend to you. The second resource that I would recommend for this specific problem is Busu. Busu is a really, really popular language app that is great for beginners. So if you're a beginner, you are totally free to use it. Um, but basically, Busu gives you exercises to use, exercises to learn language passively. Then Busu prompts you to create a written or spoken submission to send to Busu's community. Now keep in mind that Busu's active features are something that you can avoid and ignore and just not do. And then when you submit the submissions, submit the submissions, it's a little bit more out of reach to access those submissions, but Busu's main focus is the actual lessons, so it's a give and take. Another great option to solve this problem is Speechling. I love Speechling because you basically get phrases or you can even free speak and you record yourself saying the phrase or saying whatever it is that you want to say and then you send it off to Speechling's native speakers, tutors, pronunciation coaches they listen to your speaking and they correct your pronunciation or let you know that your pronunciation is perfect. While it does start out as like a repeating thing, like you're just repeating phrases, you also have the option to just turn on the microphone and free speak, responding to a prompt, asking you a question, things like that. Of course, Speechling doesn't have any actual lessons. Like I said, they're just kind of like written prompts, but those audio submissions will be sent to professionals and not just a community of other language learners. So neither one of them is better or worse, they're just different. And then finally, probably one of the most popular ways to fix this problem is language exchanges. Most popular apps for that are Tandem and HelloTalk. Basically, you jump into the app, the huge community of people who are also learning languages and speak certain language natively. What you do is you start a conversation with somebody on this app, a real human being who speaks your target language natively, and you just have a conversation via text, via call, via video chat, whatever works for you. This can be a really great way of having conversations, which is all active knowledge, except, you know, the 
when they speak to you, you use passive knowledge to understand it. But when you respond, you use active knowledge. Because remember, the most important thing is that you make sure that you're using the language actively, no matter how you're doing it. Now, my whole approach to language learning is being intentional and educated about how you learn languages, what options are, are available, and making sure that you're choosing the right resources for the actual goals that you have. If you want to learn more about my approach and how it can help you, click the link below in the description for my free training. It's where I share exactly how I go from point A to point B to point C in a logical, reasonable, educated way. If you like this video and want more content like this, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want more information about resources that will encourage you to actively use the language, I have this video here where I go through some of the more common um, language exchange apps like Tandem, like HelloTalk. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.